I am acutely aware that a vlog on this subject has the potential to turn into an eight-part Netflix documentary with spin-off series and accompanying podcast. So to avoid that, what we're gonna do is be super targeted. I'm gonna give you my top two tips for winter riding. We're gonna ask the guys in the team for their pro tip. And at the end, we're gonna go through some of the questions that you guys asked me via Instagram. Now note to all you keyboard warriors and captain commentators, get ready. Warm your fingers up because nothing riles up the emotions of cyclists' opinions like some opinionated kit chat. And that is what we are in for today. All right, fam, let's do it. How to dress for winter. Right, let's kick the controversy off. All you need is one jacket. <gasps> one jacket to rule them all. Okay, hear me out. What I have found in recent years is if you have one correctly insulated, well-fitting, reliable, technical, and weather-resistant garment, you can cover a lot of bases, enough bases. Now there are a lot of caveats there and they're all really important just as they are unique to the climate that you live in. For example, the insulation in our Rafa Protein Winter Jacket, which we run here, is way too much for Ben in Queensland and it's probably not enough for our southern neighbours. But it's that element, the insulation you have to get right. You have to get that right to make this technique work. So my tip to get that right is this. Take a look at your Strava rides throughout the three coldest months that you ride at. Look at the minimum temperatures of those rides and take a bit of an average of them. From there, take that temperature and go to the manufacturer's websites. A lot of them with these technical jackets will provide a temperature range. Have a look, choose your jacket according to that minimum average in your three months. Now I can already hear the keyboards being bashed. O-V-E-R-H-E-A-T-I-N-G, explanation mark. Now, what I will say to you guys is two things. The first, I'm not talking about some slop jacket that you picked up free at a Fondo or found on some kind of crap internet brand. This has to be good shit. You have to spend money on this. It has to be technical. With this stuff, I always use this analogy. I know people who go to the snow for like three days a year and they will spend like $800 on their jacket. They will ride all year long and they will spend $70 on a jacket. What? I hate to say it, but a lot of the time, the more money you spend on it, the better the jacket is, the better the jacket is, the more breathable it is. But you will at some point, using my system here, get hot, okay? Now, there's this other technique little known to many people. But what you can do is this. Many jackets come with a zipper and you can use it to unzip. Not only does it cool you down, this particular method, but it looks pro as. So that's a benefit. All right, speaking of, let's ask Cooper. What's his pro tip? One big thing that I always do in winter is ride with an undershirt. Undershirts are lifesavers. They keep the cold and the wetness off your chest. And if you're wearing a, like a jersey or a long sleeve, it just makes it feel so much warmer as well. You get less cold, less less of a chill factor. So that is my number one pro tip. Pip has mastered the art of winter kit in the morning. She's been doing bunches a lot more than I have lately. Been doing them for years. So, what's the temperature this morning, Pip? Two. Two. So, how many layers? Uh, just two jackets and long mix. Two jackets, long mix. Yep, yeah, that's good. Less washing. Thanks for that. All right, my second pro tip for winter riding. Layering is overrated. <gasps> I don't know where this came from. Actually, no, the, the cynical part of me thinks it was probably just a ploy from kit manufacturers to sell you every single thing in their range in the interest of layering. Or potentially it came from a time when all cycling jerseys were those slop polyester things that had you sweating at the same time of freezing. Either or, times have changed. Good stuff exists, good technical stuff exists. You don't need 12 insulating layers to stay comfortable. 
That said, this system only works just like with the jacket getting insulation right. This system only works with getting good quality base layers and a selection of them. Not to be worn at the same time, just a selection of them to choose from. Let me explain. So for our climate here in Sydney, we don't tend to run a jersey underneath the jacket. We'll choose a base layer. And what I do is I have three different merino base layers. I have a light one, I have kind of a medium one, and I have a heavy one. And I will choose which base layer goes underneath that jacket, depending on what the conditions of the day are. Again, this is technical sh This is not plastic polyester sweat box stuff. This is quality gear, the best base layers money can buy. Speaking of our marvelous equipment partner, Rafa, who are supporting domestic bike racing, so go to their website and buy everything on there. Actually, we kind of already know you do a little bit of that. You guys message us all the time. You've been inspired by something you've seen, some of the guys out there and something on the channel. But it's, it's a really difficult link for us to show them that is there. So I was actually hoping to get a favor from you guys. So if you've made a purchase or you're thinking about making a purchase and something that we've done or something that the guys have done have maybe inspired you to think about doing it, tell them. Best way to do it, jump onto the Rafa Australia or the Rafa Global Instagram page, just DM them and tell them that near some of the neurocontinental stuff that you saw inspired them. And while you're there, give them a gentle nudge to make the 2022 kit available to the public. It's a message we get all the time. Can we buy the team kit? Can we buy the team kit? It's not our call. It's very much sort of in their wheelhouse. Think of it as sort of productive cyberbullying. Now let's check in with one of the guys. Another pro tip from me is always run three quarter nicks or three quarter nicks or knee warmers. I rate them so much more than leg warmers. They feel way freer uh, on your feet and just so much more enjoyable to ride in as well. Typically look at how long the rides are, where I'm going and also um, what time I start my ride as well during the day. So typically for me, I start my rides pretty early, so around six. I normally check the wind speed as well, um, see how fast the wind speed is, so the wind can play a big factor on how I like what how I like what I choose. Now this cat Buffy is not part of what I'll be wearing. She has just conveniently located herself next to my kit. I get really cold hands, so we start with some inners. You get these from a pharmacy, they're nice and cheap, a couple of dollars I think. Then some gloves, and then some gloves on top of the gloves. Finishing off with some booty covers. We are ready to go. All right, thanks for that, mate. Um, just coming back to Laring for a moment as he takes his beating off. There was a time when in winter, I would ride in a base layer, jersey, arm warmers, long sleeve jersey, and gilet. And honestly, I reckon I spent half the ride unzipping, zipping, pocketing, depocketing, putting back on. And a lot of the time I was just in a cold sweat. And I reckon a lot of this was due to the gilet. I don't rate the gilet as a winter garment. It's a windbreaker. And it does a really good job at stopping wind coming in but it also stops anything going out. So I always kind of found myself never warm, but kind of cold. Now, don't get me wrong, the gilet still definitely plays a role in my sort of cycling wardrobe, but just not as a pure winter garment. Like my protein lightweight rain gilet is my favorite go-to kind of autumn, spring, could rain, might not rain, perfect for the Sydney climate, but just not for winter. Yeah, so ultimately, my tips can be boiled down to this statement. Ditch the layers in favor of a well-chosen technical jacket and a selection of quality base layers. All right, let's finish up with a quick fire round from some of the questions that you guys did ask us on Instagram. Now, <laughs> oh dear, 90% of the questions were feet related. What, what's going on people? What, what's wrong with your feet? I've got no idea. It's like this panic stations going on down there. Just settle down with the feet situation, all right? I'll just clear up some very basic things for you. 
Overshoes, not toe warmers. Overshoes over your tights. Ankle height overshoes, completely unacceptable. Bit controversial, but don't wear overshoes. <gasps> you know, your feet gonna get wet anyway. Uh, your socks are gonna get wet. The inside of your shoes are gonna get wet. They don't do anything. Take it from me, I'm no expert, but never run overshoes unless it's for an aero purpose. One of the very few non-feet related questions was what is my favorite non-essential bit of cycling gear? So not like jersey, jacket, that kind of thing. Neck warmer or the snood. Big fan of that actually. Keeps the neck warm, obviously, and kind of the top of your chest as well. It's easily packable, so it's that kind of extra layer that you can kind of take out and it's not a big hassle. I don't know about you, but I just find like if I'm nice and warm here, like, it's really comfortable. So that's pretty much us done, guys. I, I can't wait to see your comments on this. This, I, I want this to explode. I'm not precious about this, you know, go nuts and go, Miller, shut up, you idiot. You gotta get layers. You gotta wear 84 layers of plastic. I don't care, go nuts. I really wanna see it take off down there. I don't know what's gonna, it's, it's locked down here. I'm just like, you know, deal with it. Um, look, the only other thing I wanted to talk about quickly was, so we have some 2020 team kit that, oh, it's a long story, I hopefully was sending it to the Philippines, but President Duterte is not happy about that. So we do have some, and I've popped it up on the Nero website. There is some really, really limited stock and sizing available. Now, just with everything going on at the moment, there's just gonna have to be two conditions on it. Really, I'm sorry. We can't do returns or exchanges at the moment. So if you do wanna go down, look, it's good stuff. We've ran it for a year. The sizing's pretty standard. All the details are on the website. I will put the link up here and down below if you do wanna get involved. We will do international shipping on it, but guys, I just can't stress enough, like, it could take months. Like, that has been our experience lately, so. So yeah, check out the website for some of those bits of kit. Make sure you do message Raffer if you're inspired to purchase something, and more importantly, do some cyberbullying to get them to do the 2022 kit so you can get a piece of that. Alrighty guys, an absolute pleasure as always. I'm really, really enjoying this community at the moment. Thank you so much, he says that now. He hasn't read the comments from this video yet. All right, talk to you soon, bye bye. Hey everybody, it's Dylan here from Nero Continental. I'm just checking in to give you some tips on how to stay warm and how to dress properly this winter. So probably my biggest tip, always pack your pro team jersey from Rafa, book a flight to far north Queensland, get up there and that's all you need. Bibs and a jersey. Thanks for watching, Top Tips with Dylan.